alert. Okay, I got the tape recorder turned on. I'll set that over kind of close to you. I got a few preamble things I want to go through here real quick with. First of all, I want to I want to tell you that I appreciate your willingness to to cooperate uh, with the interview. I really do. I know that that you 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 kind of feel probably that you're in a vulnerable position and stuff like that. And I want to just tell you that I do appreciate. It. Uh, today is Wednesday, October tenth, two thousand thirteen. The time now is eleven o'clock a.m. I'm Special Agent Charlie Schneider from the Ohio Bureau of Criminal Identification Investigation. I'm presently speaking with Dr. John J. Wookie, uh, Corner Sandusky County. Uh, Dr. Wookie, would you please state your name and uh, your full name and spell your last name, please? John J. Wookie, W U K I E D O. Okay. And uh, also present with me is uh, with us at this time is uh, Attorney Dean Henry. And uh, 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 Mr. Henry, would you state your full name and spell your last name, please? It's Dean Henry, H E N R Y. My middle name is Charles, but I never use it. Okay. Uh, Okay, we're here to talk uh, about Ohio Bureau of Criminal Investigation Inquiry Number SI-72-1325-0729. The March 2, 2012 question death of uh, Jacob, Jacob Lumbarius. I think, I think I pronounced it right. Um, and uh, Dr. Wookie, uh, Mr. Henry represents you in, in a, a potential civil litigation in this matter. Is that correct? That's correct. Okay. Um, and, and just to, for the purpose of the tape and to, to, to clarify matters, uh, you want to voluntarily uh, cooperate with the, the interview at this time. Is that, is that correct? That's correct. Okay. Okay. Um, as I said before, uh, with your authorization, authorization and permission, I'm, I'm going to electronically, audibly record the interview, and I have your permission to do that. Yes. Okay. Uh, the purpose of the, the audio recording is for your protection as well as my own. This will lessen any chance of subsequent misinterpretation or incorrect reporting of, any, uh, of your statement. Uh, the full audio recording will be placed into evidence in this case and preserved for possible future review. If you would like, and we've already talked about this as well, I'll provide you both with a copy of the interview uh, on a CD or computer disk in the future. Um, as we've previously discussed, uh, the purpose of my interview is, is to uh, collect fact-based and firsthand and accurate information and to correctly report that information. I'll try to do everything in my power to do that. Uh, information obtained by myself and others in this inquiry will be used in an effort to reconstruct as best possible incidents occurring on March 2, 2012 that resulted in the gunshot death of victim Jacob Lumberios and incidents that followed. Please be advised I'm not here to judge you. I'm not here to second guess any of your decisions or any of your actions uh, of you or anyone in your office. Okay. I am here to gather truthful, fact-based information from you, which, which I will repair, prepare in a formal report. Um, I do need a firm understanding. I personally do need a firm understanding of all facts, circumstances, and decisions involved in this matter. Um, I intend to ask you a series of questions relative to Jacob Lumberio's death. If you do not understand a question, please indicate so, and I will try to clarify it or make it more understandable for you. Uh, if you do not know the answer to a question, please indicate that as well. Uh, please do not guess at a response to a question unless you indicate or stipulate that it is a guess. Uh, if you do not have firsthand or direct knowledge but have obtained or surmised an answer to a question, please also indicate that in your response. Uh, if you do not wish to answer a question or feel uncomfortable with answering a question because of possible pending civil litigation in this matter, please indicate so. I'm not going to pound you for That's answers, fine. okay? Uh, my, again, my job is just to try to assimilate the facts and try to put it together. You so answer them and I'll answer. I'll I'm sorry? Like, you ask them and I'll answer them to the best of my ability. <laughs> okay. I would expect during the interview that all of your responses will be completely truthful and accurate to the best of your ability and your recall. Um, before we begin, do you have any questions of me? No. Okay. 
Uh, would you please provide details of your previous education and your work history? How far back do you want to start? Uh, I went to medical school. We'll start there. Okay. Uh, Ohio University College of Osteopathic Medicine. Um, completed a four-year uh, degree there. Graduated and went to uh, internship position at Doctors Hospital in Maslin, Ohio. And completed the one-year internship and began practicing emergency medicine at that time at the end of 1987 and have practiced emergency medicine since that time. Um, approximately 1990, um, was asked to fill the role of uh, county coroner for Sandusky County and agreed to take on that ro role and responsibility and uh, have done that since. Okay. How long have you been there, Sandusky County Coroner? I think it was 90 or 92 that I think it was 1990 that uh, my first term started, but I'd have to pull out my CV to look at the actual okay. number. Um, after you became the Sandusky County Coroner, uh, have you received any specialized training or instruction uh, for the coroner's job? The Ohio State Coroners Association has an annual educational conference. It's a three-day conference uh, that most coroners attend go through that, that training annually, and I've made most of those over the last 20-some years. Okay. Have you received any other training in addition to that? Not in addition to that. Okay. Uh, ha have, you, have you been trained in pathology or forensic pathology at all? No. Okay. Only, only the on-the-job discussions with the forensic pathologists that, uh, you know, as we talk about cases, I learn from them each case I deal with them. Almost like an internship as you're going along, huh? Yep. Okay. Um, how many autopsies or postmortem examinations have you personally officiated at? I've performed none. Okay. I don't have training to uh, perform autopsies okay. and don't do those. I decide to have those done by someone that's trained in that manner. Okay. Does uh, Sandusky County Coroner's Office regularly conduct autopsies? I order autopsies frequently. Okay. Um, but we don't have a facility in Sandusky County. All, all the autopsies that, that I request be done are done through uh, Lucas County Coroner's Office. Okay, through Lucas County? Lucas County. Okay, mm -hmm. and that would be Dr. Beiser's office? Or? It's Dr. Jim Patrick is the uh, Lucas County Coroner. Mm -hmm. uh, at this time, he has Dr. Cindy Beiser, uh, Diane Barnett, and um, Dr. the newest one, I'm blanking on her name right now. <laughs> Um, annually, can you can you estimate how many uh, death investigations your office would normally conduct, and and what type of deaths they they normally would be? Uh, you know, uh, homicide, uh, accidental, natural, suicide. I, I get called about a lot of naturals that, uh, frankly, have no no reason to be called about. Mm -hmm. You know, people that are expected to die and do, and have tried to get the the county medical community to understand that unless they have specific concerns about those deaths that I really have no role to play in those. And those usually have attending physicians that yeah, can assign the death. Yeah, somebody yeah. that uh, has taken care of them for 20 years of their life and they finally mm -hmm. died, uh, those are not coroner's cases. So mm -hmm. I try to get them to understand the portion of the revised code that defines a coroner's case, someone that dies of accident, homicide, suicide, someone in prior good health who dies unexpectedly and the children under two and the mentally, uh, uh, you know, the pa patients that are in the MRDD system, I need to know about those deaths. Mm -hmm. And outside of that, if they have a concern that it fits one of those, call me and we'll talk about it. Yeah. Um, but outside of those, the coroner really doesn't have uh, a role in deaths outside of that definition. Right. And I, th I think that's a reoccurring theme around the state, too. I think a lot of, a lot of the different uh, institutions will... You know, the attending physician, for whatever reason, is reluctant to sign because he thinks it should be a coroner's case only because the person died, not because there's any circumstances beyond that. Right. So, uh, can you tell me about the, the actual Sandusky County Coroner's Office, where it's located at and what your physical uh, facility is, is, is like? The physical location for the coroner's office is 2000 Countryside Drive. And that's the uh, official address. Uh, have a secretary there uh, from 8 to 4.30, Monday through Friday, who interfaces with the public and keeps me posted on you know, 
things that need to be done, things that are pending, uh, when those pending things, when we get the uh, additional information that allows, you know, that it's ready to go for completions. Mm -hmm. it, is there other uh, government offices at that location? There are. The, uh, the uh, coroner's office is actually located within the Sandusky County Health Department, and uh, Marsha Overmeyer, the county registrar, is my secretary. You know, I've contracted with the county through the health department um, to provide that service, and they do that for us at a reasonable cost. And it makes the corners operations accessible to the public. Good, good. Um, how, how many other employees are there with the corners office besides yourself? And I have one uh, assistant um, corner, Dr. Joe Heaston. Um, just someone to be available if I'm not available to respond to a call or uh, you know, if I go on vacation or something like that, that nature where I don't want to be available, that there's someone that is. Mm -hmm. And that's the only other. Uh, um, anticipate changing that into the future. I've talked to the commissioners about hiring a, uh, a death scene investigator, a coroner's mm -hmm. investigator, and that's probably something that will accomplished within the next year. Okay, at this time you, you do not have At this have time you do not have an investigator, okay. any investigative staff other than myself and the uh, other assistant coroner. Okay. Does uh, the coroner's office have a standard or written policy uh, as far as how they base, uh, how they handle calls and stuff like that? Is there a you know, procedural no. policy book, anything like that? No. So you, everything that you do is basically uh, pursuant to why revised code and stuff That's like correct. that. There, okay. Um, can you tell me when and how uh, you initially learned about Jacob uh, Limberios's death? I received a call. Um, I don't remember exactly where I was or mm -hmm. uh, the circumstances, and it's been a while ago. But I received a call um, from the county uh, sheriff's office dispatches. Uh, calls for me, so they called, let me know that there was a death and on scene, and called the scene, and actually talked to uh, the sheriff himself, talked to the medics on scene, and then talked to the uh, sheriff himself, who was on scene, um, described the scenario of Jacob's death, um, and that was about the extent of it. Okay. Was that on the night that uh, they responded to the call? It was on whatever March second is whatever when they, the when date is there. Yeah. I don't. Yeah. Of 2000. I mean, I, I talked to them. They were on scene with, with okay. him, him still present on the. the, the okay. Jacob was still present on scene at that time. Okay. And, and you did, you didn't respond to the scene that night. I did not go to the scene at that time. Okay. Um, was there a reason that that you didn't go? No, I I've worked with Sheriff Overmeyer. A long time before he was sheriff as a detective um, somewhat as we've talked before you develop relationships mm -hmm. with uh, the people in law enforcement that you deal with regularly and you know he was someone that I respected as as a detective to do a good job and now stepping in uh, in Dave Gangworth's death and filling the role of the sheriff um, I've known Kyle for a long time respected his work and had no reason to doubt that Kyle could size up the scene and, and do an investigation on the scene that was adequate for what the circumstances were. Do, do you recall what specific information you were given that night when they contacted well, you? A description of what had happened, that uh, you know there were four people there and one of them had brought a gun. They all went out in the backyard and did some practice shooting with the gun or everybody got to take a shot and they came in the house and, and then... Uh, boy was on the phone and put a gun to his head and pulled the trigger and then was on the floor. Okay. So the, the scenario that has been described in all of the other reports that I've seen is is what basically what I was told. Okay. At, at any time during your investigation, did you conduct a cursory or more exam or more extensive examination? of the remains of uh, Jacob and Berrios? No, I did not. Okay, so you never, at, at that point, you had never viewed Jacob's body? That's correct. Okay. Uh, can you tell me how and why Lucas County Coroner's Office was contacted? And I think you've kind of explained that already, that you, you do most of the contracting for autopsies through them. But uh, uh, 
I, I do is, have is a contract. That I have a contract with Lucas County mm -hmm. uh, Coroner's Office uh, to perform autopsies. Um, in Jacob's instance, um, the family had taken Jacob out of the ground uh, and had him examined by Cyril Wecht. Uh, the findings and opinion of Cyril Wecht uh, had significant doubt attached to him for lack of a... Yeah. It was inconsistent other, other, with yeah, the information it, you'd it, been provided. It was inconsistent with, the, and, and, uh, with what what I was told had occurred at the scene, mm -hmm. you know, primarily his his um, impression of homicide, based on on the findings that he had, and had discussed the case with Dr. Beiser about you know how do we go about dealing with this, and she felt strongly that she needed to examine the body to give an opinion mm -hmm. um, that she could stand behind, you know let her look at it and do her own findings. So that's what we did. Because at that point, she she, she hadn't seen She had not, never seen the body. The body. No. She actually uh, examined his body, if I understand it correctly, after he was exhumed a second time. Correct. And, and after uh, Dr. Wett had conducted the initial autopsy on him? That's correct. Okay. Uh, did, did you attend the autopsy or uh, no, examination that Dr. Beiser did? No, I did not. Okay. Uh, did you consult with Dr. Beiser or Mrs. Saul uh, about uh, Jacob's uh, Liberios's autopsy uh, after the fact? The uh, Dr. Beiser called me after performing the autopsy and uh, was surprised to find the beveling findings being totally contrary to the directionality that was reported by Dr. Weck. Mm -hmm. um, she reviewed the images of the bone reconstruction from the skull that her and Dr. Saul had worked on and put together. And I reviewed Dr. Saul's report, did not specifically discuss it with Dr. Saul. Okay. Um, and, and for clarification for the tape, so, so you know, I previously uh, spoke with Dr. Beiser and Mrs. Saul, and, and copies of their reports have been uh, uh, also included into the uh, investigative case file by PCI. Okay. Um, so the, those results and stuff that you're, you're talking about, that, you know, they're, you already they're, have all of that. they're indicated there. Yes. Correct. Um, did you have any concerns about uh, Dr. Beiser or Mr. Saul's findings? No concerns. Um, okay. They were. They were what they were. They, I think, they clearly demonstrated directionality mm -hmm. as. Uh, being different than what Dr. Wecht had produced. Um, I had a fair amount of discussion with Dr. Beiser regarding the uh, issue of proximity that you know, I think her opinion would be that you can't determine proximity in this case. Mm -hmm. um, one, based on the degradation of the tissue, the embalming procedures and, and such, um, you know, some of what was stated by Dr. Wecht, she just frankly had disagreement with. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I think proximity is probably not a question that can be accurately answered, mm -hmm. um, but directionality certainly was. And okay. At the time of your official findings relative to Jacob Lombario's death, what information or documentation was available for your review and consideration in order to make the, your determination as far as the method and manner of death? Well. My discussion with Sheriff Overmeyer um, the night of the uh, the event that occurred, um, at the time that I did the uh, completed a death certificate on Jacob, you know, I have, if there was other information to come forward mm -hmm. that uh, they had discovered on the scene. There's no doubt in my mind that they would have notified me and said, we've come up with something different than what we talked about. Mm -hmm. None of that ever happened. I had a story that four kids were at a house. One of them shot himself, mm -hmm. as witnessed by the, the other three individuals there, and signed it out as a gunshot wound to the head. Okay. I, I guess I don't really regret, but it, it's made it more difficult um, 
<clears throat> to have put a piece in the death certificate that uh, was trying to be compassionate to the mother mm -hmm. and let her down a little easier on this and, and therefore my statement in, in the death certificate that says he may not have realized that the gun was loaded mm -hmm. or something to that effect. Um, I've, got, I've got copies of the actual certificate of death and then I'm, I'm not sure what this is and I think probably what you're referring to is the second sheet that I showed you there. I believe okay. those are your reports, are they not? They are. Yeah. This one. Yeah, here's where I put it on. DC shot self in head, may not have realized the gun was loaded. Okay. I put in there. I put that in there purely for compassion sake. Compassion for the mother to give her some question about mm -hmm. intention. Okay. Unfortunately, when someone puts a gun to their head and they can't tell us anything beyond that point, we have no way to know what their intention mm -hmm. was. Okay. And um, you know, my training is that those are considered suicides when someone does that. Okay. Well, if you're talking about intention, uh, do you believe that uh, establishing intent is necessary uh, to, to rule a death as a suicide? I have not in the past. Mm -hmm. yeah, I'm not. I, I think there's writings in two different camps on that. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I, I think when someone, uh, and, I, and I've made statement in the newspaper in the past that that I didn't believe that intent was necessary um, to establish suicide. If someone puts a gun to their head and pulls the trigger and, and it goes bang, I've, I've ruled those all suicides for the last 20 years. Okay. Is, is that from training or just a, a personal? Partly from tr from training and interacting with uh, mm -hmm. the pathologist at Lucas County. Okay. I, I think there's probably some regionality to that thought. Mm -hmm. Some, I think some areas may want to demonstrate intent before they'll make that ruling. Mm -hmm. uh, in this region of the state, the feeling is that if someone puts a gun to their head and pulls the trigger and it goes bang and they die, we call those suicides. And probably in particular if they know that the, the, the weapon's loaded or has a potential to, to be loaded or, or to function. Correct. Okay. Uh, did, you, did you consult with any other persons uh, besides Dr. Beiser when you made your findings? Or did you consult with Dr. Beiser when you made your findings? No, I did not. Okay. No. So I, your findings are based just on the sheriff's based on the sheriff's um, report from the scene, the description of the scenario, and unfortunately, what happened happened, and mm -hmm. uh, he clearly had a gunshot wound to the head, <laughs> and I've yet to hear another witness describe it as anything other than him pulling the trigger. Okay. Did or do you have access to any information? not known or officially part of any of the investigative records involved in the Lumberio's death investigation? No. Okay. We're winding down. <laughs> um, at this time, and based on your examination, review of the information and documentation that's been made available to you in the Jacob Lumberio's death, have you any determination or conclusions as to the entry and exit wound location as far as which side is, you know, you understand what I'm saying, which side is the entrance wound and which, which side is the exit wound, uh, the wound tract or projectile uh, path through the, the victim? Do you, do you have any... Uh, I'm not sure I understand your question. <laughs> well, I, I, I have this, a, is, this is after the fact, after, after you've, you've looked at Dr. Beiser's reports and you've reflected back with your investigation uh, and you've looked at the various... I assume you've looked at Beiser's reports I have. and as well as Dr. Saul's. Uh, have you seen Dr. Weck's report as well? Yes. Okay. Uh, have you been able to make any personal determinations or conclusions based on the reports as to which side the wound is, based on their information on the, the, the culmination? Of, I, I, of I think the uh, the findings of Dr. Beiser and and Saul clearly demonstrate that it was a right to left trajectory of this gunshot wound. Okay. Uh, and, and we talked a little bit about the the barrel to. Uh, 
for lack of a better word, proximity to the yeah the proximity uh, determination. And uh, Dr. Beiser has indicated that due to his hair, you know, that it's probably <clears throat> nearly impossible to talk about the. Uh, powder staining and burns and stuff like that there that uh, because of the thickness of his hair and stuff. Do you have any conclusions or? Uh... No, I, I really defer to Dr. Beisner's expertise to mm -hmm. give me an opinion. Um, I think it's her opinion that proximity cannot be determined. Okay. And then there was the gunshot residue that Dr. Weck found that I think was on the left side or uh, in the wound tract or something. I, uh, did you see? I don't think he, he found dark something. He didn't. You're right. He, he did not. He found a dark. He did not specify what what it was that he saw. Right. Um, clearly, there's not gunshot residue on the left side of the head. Uh, he was shot on the right side of the head. Right. Um, okay. Are you aware of any information you believe I should be cogniz cognizant of that has not been addressed during the interview? I don't think so. Okay. Do you have any questions of me at this time? No. Okay. Is there anything you would like to say or address before we conclude the interview? No. Okay. In the future, if I have any additional questions or I need uh, to explore another issue with you, is it okay if I give you a call and, and we set up another uh, meeting and, and interview? Would Absolutely. Be okay. okay. And. Basically, I guess I would ask one Please. other thing. If, no if, if in the process of investigation there is something that is discovered that's contrary to what what you know that I believe at this time, that you know what would be the pro when would I get notified of a finding as as the one stamping this death certificate with my name that uh, I believe this is what's happened. If if something were to be found in the attorney general's group of investigators putting this together would would I be notified of that early I, I, on, or I would? I mean, yeah. my expectation would be that, as as the one responsible for the determination of cause of death here, that if there was other information, that I would be made aware of it. I would I would certainly hope so. I, I don't have the answer, but I'll try to get that answer for you. Okay, and and I'll, I'll get back to you. Uh, you know, it's, it's Frankly, not that I anticipate anything else being yeah. found, but I've told Dean from the beginning, I told Dr. Beiser from the beginning, and then Sean O'Connell from the beginning of this reinvestigation that if there's other information that changes the picture, that it is what it is. Mm -hmm. And I've yet to hear any other information. That, okay. Um, and what, what, I mean, in respect to other information, is there is something that would would suggest that this is other than what we thought it was? You mean other than a suicide? Yeah, other, okay. you know, I, I I know Mr. McGookie would like to believe that this was a homicide okay. um, perpetrated by one of the other three individuals mm -hmm. there. I've yet to see anything from anybody that supports that concept. And and, and there's always a possibility it could be an accidental as well. I mean, uh, uh, anywhere from homicide to suicide to accidental to, you know, I mean, they, they, it could be any one of those. And I will try to, to address that issue with my, my supervision. Okay. I will try to determine uh, when they complete their, their investigative process that, that, that you're contacted with the results of it. And the one piece I've seen in the newspaper stated frequently is that I ruled this an accidental suicide. And that's clearly not true. Okay. Um, I never ruled it an accidental suicide. Um, and I think it's probably because of that compassionate part that you put on the correct. You know, and I, I think the, the ruling was suicide. With, with, I, with I tried you, correct. Yeah. I think they tried to take liberty to uh, distort what's said and intentionally have done that multiple times in multiple okay. ways in their newspaper printing. Yeah. Mr. Henry, do you have any questions? No. Okay. I don't. Thank you. Okay. Well, I'm, I want to thank you very, very much for for allowing me to come to your beautiful home and You're uh, sitting down and talking with me. And uh, I, I hope I uh, haven't caused you uh, any concern or alarm. I, I do appreciate your, all. your cooperation. And I'll go ahead and stop the tape now. Uh, and again, it's uh, I'll, I'll provide both of you with a with a copy, a full copy of it on CD. I'll, okay. I'll tr I may try to get that in the mail uh, before this weekend to you. Okay. Uh, the time now is 11.28 a.m.